Hello everyone, you are welcome to the first edition of our flagship program, Your Health. This is a program that seeks to explore all things health with expert discussions. My name is Nathaniel J. Tremé. I'm a board certified internal medicine physician here in Phoenix, Arizona. And today I have with me to discuss your health, Dr. Nana Kwabna Inketia Jumo. He is a board certified emergency medicine physician here in Phoenix, Arizona as well. We are going to talk about something that everyone must know and do. It can be simple and complex. It is about exercise. According to the CDC, more than 60% of U.S. adults do not engage in the recommended amount of activity. Approximately 25% of all adults in the United States are not active at all. It gets scarier when you think about the fact that 1 in 10 premature deaths are attributed to lack of physical activity. Let's learn about exercise today. And Dr. Jumo, you are welcome. Thank you for having me here. Thank you so much. I think you are the perfect person to start this discussion because I've been seeing how active you are um, on, on various social media platforms. So, yeah, thank you for agreeing to be with us. It's a privilege to have been invited to this maiden edition of Your Health. And I wish you nothing but all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, without further ado, as they keep saying, <laughs> what is exercise? Well, thanks for that question. What is exercise? If you do a, dish, um, uh, a search on the internet, it may come up like uh, uh, an exercise, either being a verb or a noun. Okay. So in the noun part of the definition of an exercise, it's an activity requiring physical effort carried out to sustain or improve health and fitness. It's very important, health and fitness. We're not talking about weight loss here, okay? And also, it's a process or activity carried out for a specific purposes, especially one concerned with specified area or skill. And on the verb side, we say, I'm going to exercise, I'm going to exercise. So it's involved in engage in physical activity to sustain or improve health and fitness. Again, to sustain, improve health and fitness. And that's when you exercise. So if you're asking me what is exercise in a nutshell, that's what exercise means in the, uh, in the physical world. That is a very comprehensive definition for exercise I've had. And um, using a noun and a verb to describe exercise. I, I, I think there are various types of exercises you want us to talk about, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you explore more about what, what types of exercises uh, that we have. Well, that's true. And uh, since we are here in the United States, I'll talk about what the National Institute of Health categorize uh, what exercise is. We know we have various kinds of exercise, running, jumping, and all sort of exercises. But among all this, they've categorized it into four main ones, which are strengthening, stretching, balance, and aerobic exercise. So a physical activity is any deliberate muscle movement you know, that uses energy. It can be structured exercise like sports, gym, gym session, or going for a run, or part of your work, your leisure time, or any other movement you do during your day. So, like I said, there are different types of physical activity, and they are often categorized uh, based on the kind of movement you know, they involve and how, intensi how intensely you do them. So that's why, based on those four, based on those things, the NASA Institute of Health categorized the four main groups as strengthened exercise, stretching exercise, balance, and aerobic exercise. And we do all this to keep you active mobile and feeling great. I know we're going to go into details, but I'll wait till you ask me those questions for. Yeah, I, I, very good. I think, I think you pre preempted what I'm going to ask. I, I just want us to um, pick them one by one. And what is strengthening exercise? All right, what is strengthening exercise? First of all, I'm going to talk about what a strengthening exercise is, and then I'm going to give a few examples. Then we'll move on from there. So, so as we age, you know, we know, and when, as we age, we lose muscle mass, Strength training, the strength training builds, you know, this back, you know, the muscles back, you know. And regular strength training will help you feel more confident and capable of daily, daily chores, like carrying groceries, you know, gardening, and, and lifting heavier objects around, 
those are some that these are some of the things that strength and exercise will help you to do. And strengthening your muscle not only makes you stronger, you know, but also stimulates bone growth. A lot of stuff going bone growth lowers blood sugar. Believe me or not, it lowers blood sugar. You know, assists with weight control, improves balance and posture, and also stress and joint pain in the lower back and joints. So these are some of the uh, benefit of strength, uh, stretching exercise, strengthen exercise. An example, if I may go there, is like lifting weights is a form of strengthening exercise. Working uh, with resistant barbs, uh, a form of uh, strengthening exercise. And doing push-ups or sit-ups, those are part of like uh, strengthening exercises. Very good. I think we can go to the next point where we talk about balance exercise. All right, balance exercise. What is balance exercise and what are examples of balance uh, exercise? You know, improving your balance makes you feel steadier on your feet and helps prevent, you know, falls. Try, you know, standing on one foot or the other. You see how your, your balance becomes uh, very uh, scary. But with, with, ex with exercises, you'll be able to, like, balance yourself with no problem. So it's especially important as we get older when the system that helps us to maintain balance, like our vision, our inner ear, and our less muscle and joint tend to break down. The good news is that training your balance, you know, can help prevent and reverse these losses. And also, many senior centers these days and just offer balance training, you know, balance exercise, which, are, which involve focused exercise classes such as Tai Chi, yoga, you know, it's never too early to start this type of exercise, even if you feel you don't have balance problem. So I think I made mention of, uh, with my definition of balance exercise, I gave you a couple of examples, and those are like walking hill, walk, walking on your hill, uh, walking on your toes, those are all balanced stuff that come Or standing on one foot, like I gave you an example, and repeating with the other. You stand on one foot, and you change... You try to uh, maintain the balance. Yoga is a form of uh, balance exercise. Tai Chi is a form of balance exercise. Also, standing on from a seated position, you know, standing up from a seated position without holding on onto on anything. Those are all forms of balance exercise that you don't need to go to a gym to do it. You can do it at the privacy of your own home. I see. That's interesting. Um, so, uh, well, dancing, when when you, like, how do they call those dancers? Ballerina dancers? Uh, uh, <laughs> I think ballerina, yeah, yeah. you see how they balance yeah. on their feet like they're about to fly. Okay. Yeah, those are, I think they work on their balances. So that can be a form of balance exercise. If you're a ballerina, you do a lot of balance exercise. Nice, nice. Yes. And then I think we can go into aerobic exercises. I think aerobic exercise is what comes to mind when people hear of exercise. Most of the time, you see that strengthening on aerobic. So aerobic is, so com we commonly say that, the, you know, cardiovascular or cardio, that's the show for, oh, I'm going to work on my cardio, I'm going to do a yako. So, but aerobic exercise includes anything that gets your breathing and heart rate up. Okay. Your breathing and heart rate up. Okay, those are, you know, any exercise. So everyone can benefit from this type of movement, regardless of their age or physical abilities. So aerobic exercise, what, what can it do? It can help improve blood pressure, cholesterol, and your sleep. Over time, this exercise can also reduce your risk of uh, developing many of the chronic diseases that we, we've come to know of, like diabetes, high blood pressure, and you know, and what have you. So then what are examples of aerobic exercise? I just defined it as including anything that gets your breathing and heart rate up. So anything that will help uh, increase your heart rate and your breathing can be considered an uh, aerobic exercise, like running, swimming, or just going for a brisk walk, not leisure walk, brisk walk. You okay. Know? Uh, this can uh, uh, be broken down further into like within the aerobic can go with low intensity, okay. moderate intensity, and vigorous intensity. If you have been to the gym, you know you can see you know different people work doing their cardio, but you will be able to tell that oh this person moderate, this person you know vigorous. So so uh, examples of low intensity uh, aerobic is like leisurely walking, light swimming. You know, even vacuuming, you know, the rhythm of vacuuming, you know, mopping and other house cleaning activities are an example of aerobic activity because they, what do they do? They increase your heart rate and they, you know, get your breathing up. So, and even washing the car, you know, or, or even light gardening, all this, you, uh, you'll be doing your chores, but still 
exercising at the same time. Yes. That's very, very, very interesting and very detailed. Correct. And then I think the last one we will talk about will be vigorous activity. I think vigorous activity is under aerobic. So like, you know, I said, I would say vigorous, moderate. So they are all under aerobic. So uh, and the, what I like about vigorous activity is like, if you are out of breath and uh, you can only, you know, string a few words together at a time, you are in the vigorous intensity range. Okay. Uh, some people prefer this level of physical activity as if it brings the same health benefits in less than time. However, if you are new to exercise or if you have any health complication, uh, we don't recommend you going through that vigorous uh, exercises. Before you do that, you have to speak you, to your friendly physician. Okay. So example of the vigorous one is riding or biking at a fast pace. You know, the bottom line is the fast pace. So you can be just biking slowly and that would be like not moderate activity but not vigorous. Swimming lap slowly, not being like Michael Phelps, like just slowly that would be like vigorous. And doing heavy yard work such as prolonged digging or shoveling, that can be vigorous activity. And playing basketball or tennis, you know how active they go back and forth. Those are all vigorous. So all that, this are uh, under cardio and Very aerobic. Good. Okay. Very so, good. Yeah. So so you, you were trying to explain uh, to us the kind of intensity in terms of um, when, 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 you, when you are describing your cardio, when people say cardio, cardio they, right. they are different intensities to the cardio correct, exercise. And, correct. And, and you just talked about vigorous activity correct. as part of it. Correct, correct. And I think you wanted to also talk about moderate activity. Yeah, yeah, moderate activity. Moderate activity is also under uh, cardio. So uh, what is moderate? Uh, moderate activity is it's like if you are exercising, okay, and you can talk, that's, that's what we call it a moderate. But if you're exercising and uh, you can talk but not sing, that's moderate. Okay? But the vigorous, you know, you, you can just few words and, you know, nobody understands you. That's more like it. Uh, so moderate intensity activity, get your heart again pumping because it's what? Under cardio. It's under aerobic. So anything that keeps your heart pumping and your... Uh, had be going up is cardio. So moderate doing this activity, you should be able to talk but not sing, like I said. Okay. So most adults and children can benefit from moderate intensity activity because many of the health benefits of aerobic exercise, believe it or not, believe, begin in this range. It's mostly okay. in the moderate range. So, okay. So older adults or those with a history of health condition should talk to their doctor about an appropriate intensity level for them. But most of the time, Moderate intensity activity is always good for them, like swimming or water, water, water aerobics, jogging. You can jog at your own pace, you know, walking quickly, dancing, like you said, the ballerinas, okay? Those are moderate intensity. Doing yard work or leisurely, bike, leisurely biking, those are all like types of uh, moderate intensity and the aerobic, you know, exercise. But Very what we have to know, I didn't mean to cut it, but what we have to know that each of this physical activity brings its own health benefits. Okay, and it's important to try to include them all on your uh, 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 weekly routine. So each of this all is very important. Very good. So someone will ask, um, do we have to do all of them at the same time, or is there is there a way, a formula to to figure out which of these four types of activities to do? No, you don't have to do them all at the same time, and and and, and it's going to be depend on your time avail availability. Let's take me for example, okay? Uh, I'm on nocturnist, so I, my shift is already at night shift. So when I come home from work, I try to get my exercise in before I go and take a shower and go to sleep. I can't tell myself I'm going to take a go to sleep and wake up early and work out before I go to work. I'll be thinking of it why am I sleep? I'm not going to get enough sleep. So for me, like Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays are my gym days where I go and I lift weights. Thursday and Friday, Thursday, uh, Tuesday and Thursday, I go and a brisk walk, maybe five miles for my. And on the weekend on Sunday, I do vigorous where I go and hike on the mountains. So that's me. So, so I, with this, I know within a week I can get all these exercises included in my uh, fitness activities. So, as individual, just knowing that you need all this is out to you. You know, to distribute them. Uh, according to your uh, time and availability. So really the goal is to try and have all the four um, in, in, in your own 
pace or in your own way. That's exactly okay. not in the same day, but yeah, within a yeah. Correct. All right, very good. From from how how you are talking, do you really have a particular? Out of these four, do you have a particular one you, which is your favorite? My favorite, anytime I'm walking, I think I'm getting my muscles down, my cardio down. So I think my hiking and walking is my favorite. Okay. Yeah, in the gym, I get bored quickly. You know, I just <laughs> see the repeating the same thing, you get bored, you know. But like, you know, being out, there's something about being in nature, being yes. outdoors, you know, keep, it, it keep, it, like there's no fatigue, you know. Even when you are fatiguing something, Intrigues you, you see something like wow. As you contemplate on it, you forget about your your muscle aches and whatever. That, and that's going, that's true. But when you are in the gym, you are inclusive. It's you and your weight. So sometimes, you know, I know they say effort is your own responsibility, but sometimes the effort will be like a little bit. Okay, so. that's 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 a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like I like walking myself. Um, I haven't been able to do a lot of running, but yeah, I I, I try to walk. Correct. Yeah, walking is the most common form of exercise that you don't need money or anything to start. You know, is the most one of the most common form of exercise that one in one needs in their life. Yeah. yeah. So, what are the benefits of exercise? Yeah, I can't talk about benefits of exercise without quoting the World Health Organization research that they did, and they published an article at in October fifth. Uh, 2022, which we are in 2023, so it's kind of most recent. So, and the key facts that they came up with that you know, physical activity has significant significant health benefits for your hearts, bodies, and minds, like we've been saying all along throughout this uh, program. And physical activity contributes to preventing and managing non-communicable diseases such as the cardiovascular disease, hypertension, and that we know of, and cancer and diabetes. And physical activity also reduces symptoms of uh, depression and anxiety. Like I said, you know, you go out, you walk in, and you know, you see nature. You forget about your depression. You forget about you know your problems, and you're there focusing on yours. So these are some of the things. And physical activity ensures healthy growth and development in, in young people. And also, one thing you should know that physical activity improves overall well-being. And globally, one in four adults do not meet the global recommendation level of fiscal activity. I know you mentioned earlier on your the introduction, US. correct? Yeah. So, and people who are insufficiently active have a twenty to thirty percent increased risk of death compared to people who are sufficiently active. Okay. So, more than eighty percent of the world's adolescent population is insufficiently physically active, uh, from according to WHO publication October fifth, twenty twenty two. That's that's scary because if you if you are thinking they are the future, they they should be yeah. exercising a lot more. Yeah, I, I tell you, that's that's a very good point. Hit yeah. the nail on the head. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's 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 interesting. Are there are there any recommendations like age group wise and are there like? Oh yeah, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm glad you're asking. God, the WHO recommend uh, gala recommendation provide details for different age group. Even from the newborn, <laughs> uh, to the pregnant people, we'll, we'll go into details. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll provide this one for specific. So, like in a tw- even like in a twenty-four day uh, period, in a twenty-four day, like even uh, infants less than one year should. There's a whole list of them that they should be doing. I know if we go into that, uh, we go, we're going to be going to a lot. But uh, there's age growth from um, less than one, and from two to four, five to uh, eight, uh, sixteen to eighteen. Uh, then 18 to 64, even the pregnant people and postpartum, they have all exercise that they should be doing. So, like, if uh, you go back and look at the, the BHO uh, presentation on October 5th, 2022, I think uh, all this uh, are going to be, unless you want me to take a one uh, or two examples. Maybe, maybe just a couple of examples couple, and then, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah, so maybe could. I will take a couple of like maybe children and, and adolescent age five to seventeen years. Yeah, like you said, they are the future. You know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this one, uh, they should do at least an average of sixty minutes per day of moderate to vigorous intensity, mostly aerobic physical activity across the week. All they are asking for sixty minutes per day of moderate to vigorous. Activity. Sixty minutes is one hour, brothers and sisters. Sixty minutes. It's one one hour that yeah. you can put your phone down. Yes. You can get, you know, put your game console away and just do a moderate to vigorous intensity exercise. And within that, they should incorporate vigorous intensity aerobic activity as well as those that strengthen muscles and both at least 
three days a week. Okay. So I think I'm good on that. I go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I'm good on that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a limited amount of time spent being sedentary. Yes. That's the most important, sedentary, particularly the amount of recreational screen time. Okay. You know, so uh, I think that's what uh, goes for, you know, uh, the, um, the adolescent age 5 to uh, 17. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I know um, the, the middle group, like the 18 to 64, we, we, all the exercises we've talked about will really, really affect them. But how about the 65s above? I think those are the age group that okay. people forget about them. That's a good question. <laughs> Believe it or not, even 65 and above, what is it? same as for adults. Okay. Same as for adults, but there's a caveat. And, you know, there's the, the recommendation is it's the same as the adults, but there's an end. And what is the end? And when, as part of their weekly physical activity, older adults should be varied, multi-component physical, should vary multi-component physical activity that emphasizes functional balance okay. and strength training at moderate or greater intensity on three or more days a week to enhance functional capability and to prevent falls. You know, the older we get, we are, you know, predisposed to fall and all that stuff. So that's why they say, and together with all you're supposed to do an adult 18 to 64 is also to, as part of it, you should be very multi-component physical activity that emphasizes physical, functional balance and strength training to moderately uh, or greater intensity okay. on three or more days of the week. So three or more days of the week and there are seven days in a week. So out of the three or four days, you're supposed to you know, be on that so that you prevent falling. So. Yeah, how about people who kind of have chronic conditions that it, it, it becomes an excuse for people to not want to exercise. What, uh, what will you say uh, about that? Okay. So, like I said, effort is, is your own responsibility. And having a chronic disease is no excuse not to exercise. Remember I said walking is the most common form of exercise. So, if you have chronic conditions like hypertension, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, HIV, and you're a cancer survivor, all goes, all this goes with it. There's a recommendation that you should do at least 150 to 300 minutes. It sounds like a big number, but 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity at least a day. Okay, 150 minutes is just like what, a little over two and a half hours. So yeah, that's what they so recommend. And they should also do muscle and uh, muscle strengthening and uh, activities at moderate or greater intensity that involve all major muscle groups on two or more days to, uh, to a week. So it looks like they are more, they're still doing what the adults are supposed to do, so they have no excuse. And to help reduce the you know, detrimental effect of high levels of sedentary behavior or health, all adults and older uh, children, older uh, adults, even with chronic condition, should aim to do more than the Required, like what I've said, you know, the recommendation levels of moderate to vigorous uh, physical activity. So far as if you exercise, you and I know that the more you exercise, the more your body adjusts and the more you can do. So, yes, there are recommendations, but try to go beyond your recommendations. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's 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 very 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 uh, detailed, and no one is spared. Everybody has to has, has to, to exercise. Like, keep moving, keep moving, <laughs> yeah, keep people with a disability, um, everyone. So Correct. yes, you, we have to just keep moving, and and it looks like you you talked about benefits of exercise. I don't know if there, there were more that you wanted to, uh, to talk about. What we call the benefit and risk of physical activity and sedentary behavior. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about do they do this? How about if you don't? So. Uh, from the nutshell, say physical uh, with regular physical activities such as walking, cycling, you know, wheeling, doing sports or active recreation provides significant benefits, you know, for health. Again, don't look at weight loss as your caveat or your goal. It's just about health and fitness. You know, some physical activity is better than doing none. Yes. Okay. By becoming more active throughout the day in a relatively simple ways, people can easily achieve the recommended activities that were mentioned. You know, like I said, walking, you know, you can easily achieve it. But physical inactivity, yeah. physical inactivity is one of the leading risk factors for non-communicable diseases mortality, you know. People who are insufficiently active have a 20% to 30% increased risk of death compared to people who are sufficiently active, according to WHO and the National Institute of Health. So, 
inactivity is not good. Activity is good. Very and good. Effort, effort is your own responsibility. Yeah, I like I like that. And I mean, to think about the fact that just being inactive puts you at a risk of dying should should make us want to exercise. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I I like I like how you kept you kept saying keep moving. Yeah. You 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 made you made a very good point about it, uh, because it looks like from all that you are saying, the the health benefits are immense, okay. and 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 we have to try as much as possible to 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 work with that okay. to to use any effort we have to be able to to exercise and okay. and, and get the benefits of it. Okay. Is there a way to prepare to exercise? Yeah. Well. Is there a way to prepare? First thing is to prepare your mind. Okay. Because like I said, you know, effort is your own responsibility. So you have to prepare your mind to make the effort. So depending on what kind of activity, you know, you're going to be doing. Like if you're going for, you want you want to start with walking, make sure that you are walking with the appropriate type of shoes. You know? Okay. And like, so that at the end of the day, you know, you don't get blisters and blame it on you know, your walking. So, like, you know, if you're going to be walking, make sure you get the appropriate type of shoes, you know. If, like, here in Arizona, it's hot, so I got to be sure I, I want to walk. Do I want to walk in the middle of the day or whatever? <laughs> no, I don't, okay. So, and hydration, hydration, hydration is more important, you know. Hydrate yourself before any activity and hydrate yourself after any act- if any activity. So, yeah, there's a lot of, depending on what you want to do. If you want to buy, if you want to cycle, you first have to get a bicycle. A bicycle, right? yeah. 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 And it's your cycle, is it a mountain bike, is it a road bike? And, you know, so depending on what you want to do, then you prepare for that. So, yeah. yeah. But once you start, make sure that you keep yourself hydrated and then know when to stop, you know know when to stop. And and it looks like it can be very inexpensive. You talked about walking being very, like a, the, one of the cheapest form of exercise. That's the yeah. one of, th- you, like I said, like we live in Arizona. If you live in a, t- a two-story building, just wake up in the morning, put yourself, go up and down, up and down, up and down, get your watch on. When it says, why am I complete? You're done, you know? Yes. So you can be walking and run, 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 run about like in circles in your own living room, you know, 50 laps, and then you're done. So like I said, if you cannot do anything at all, please walk, walk, and walk, and walk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I, when I was doing the introduction, I, I mentioned that you are an ED physician. In the church, you are the health and temperance um, director, and right. and and you you are leading by example, Great. helping us to exercise as well. What would be your final message to recap? My final message, like I said, keep moving. You know, regular physical activity can improve muscular and cardiovascular, you know, fitness, improve bone and functional health, reduce the risk of hypertension, coronary disease, stroke, diabetes, various type of cancer, including breast cancer and colon cancer and depression. It reduces the risk of falls as well as hip or vertebral fractures and help maintain a healthy body weight. I know you mentioned about me being head of the fitness, uh, health and temperance in the church. You remember I introduced that at least one and one mile a day walk. Yes. You know, you know how the church always all got, you know, uh, got around it, and the older, the younger one, they all involved, and like it doesn't take. And I, I say one mile a day, but people are over eight miles, <laughs> eight miles seven miles, yes. ten miles. So like nobody is ten miles here, but I know we're gonna get there. So yeah. once they started, they noticed, oh. One mile, oh, I can do more, two miles. And now, you know, they are all working hard. And I'm glad, you know, thanks for the heavens for this knowledge to, you know, come up with that. Yeah. At least one mile a work day. So yeah. it's something that if everybody can incorporate into their family, it start with the family, start at home, you know. Yeah. And then go from there. Yeah. Thank you very much. So viewers here, here we have it. It's it's not expensive. It's you can you can start by walking. By all means, keep moving. The body is made to move. If you have to pack your car a little bit farther away so that you'll be able to walk, if you have to use the steps or the staircase instead of elevator, you do that. Keep moving and and I think you will enjoy and reap the benefits of it. Thank you so much, Dr. Jumo, for for coming and for teaching us about exercise. Thank you, Dr. Jumo.